A public protector report probes a 10-year period from 1985 and exposes an illegal 2.25 billion rand apartheid era bailout to Bancorp, which Absa Bank later acquires. The report implicates the Reserve Bank, Treasury and then the Presidency, but denials and deflections are all that seems to result. A cartel of three companies is found guilty of fixing the price of bread for 12 years. Shockingly, allegations re-emerge mid-2016. Why have bread prices not fallen since January 2015 in line with low international wheat prices? A rand price fixing scandal disgraces three of South Africa's biggest banks, Standard Bank, APSA and Investec. President Jacob Zuma in his February 2017 State of the Nation address warns that government is prepared to act against the private sector in order to protect the economy. An ANN7 expose reveals the plunder of the National Treasury between 2014 and 2015. An internal audit report shows how the National Treasury favored a few service providers, including Bits Technologies, KPMG, and others in its integrated financial management system project. These are just a few examples of the real capture of the economy and the state going on for the past 23 years. The end of apartheid brought political freedom to an extent, but the economy still squarely in the clutches of a few. People must not forget that uh, the state capture is not, doesn't start now during this president uh, Zuma. It is from the inception where colonial uh, rule came to this country. You have to ask yourself why are we poor? Why are our masses poor? They are poor because the state is captured. It wasn't captured yesterday. It was captured from the time that a certain race landed on our, on our shores and started to kill everybody to take what they want. That was a capture of our state. So it, it has come for a very long time, the way that it is. We have done now the truth and reconciliation, which was about the violence against our people. Now we need the state capture, report, an investigation on state capture, but not state capture about two individuals or two entities. State capture about the way our state is owned by foreign entities. But if you've heard the opposition, NGOs, the so-called civil society and mainstream media talking, you would get a sense that there is only one family in particular that has captured the state allegedly in cahoots with President Jacob Zuma. Allegations that were also the main thrust of former public protector Tulima Donzela's state of capture report. What is best that you can expect from uh, uh, pub, former public protector Tulima Donzela? where he was, she was assigned or responsible for leveling the ground for the dispensation into the new South Africa, leveling it. But instead, what did he do? What did she do? She ignored the actual uh, problems, you know, atrocities committed of the past, but concentrated only on the master's mission that she was saving. But the nation is slowly but surely waking up to the real capture of SA's resources that has been going on unhindered for decades. A group of about 90 members of parliament recently approached the incumbent public protector Musisiwe Mkwabani. The outraged MPs, including dozens of ministers, questioning the narrow focus on Matonzela's state of capture report accusing her of releasing a report lacking substantive evidence and resorting to innuendos and malicious rumors. 
that. I think the emphasis here is on the broadening of the scope of the state of capture report. Because to some of us it appears that uh, the report is narrow and is targeted. So we'd like it to be more open so that anybody who is implicated should be taken out into the open. We came to the public protector to say that can you please uh, investigate this thing in in the holistic manner so that the the communities that sent us to parliament they know the truth because most of the things are appearing in the media we don't know which is true and which is not true as members of parliament we want the facts i think the report that came uh, about treasury not following a uh, the laws and its own regulations is very worrying. I'm worried especially about that. MPs further made 10 damning charges about what they called the real capture of South Africa. Rupert's, Oppenheimer's and the business elite control SA's financial sector. Treasury, SARB, FIC, PIC and FSB work against government and to SA's detriment. Treasury, SARB, FIC, etc. operate in the interest of few instead of the majority. Many South African companies enjoy very high profit margins, often 50% higher than in other nations. Treasury protects its friends in the business elite and this must be investigated. Discrimination in granting banking licenses has allowed four banks to dominate South Africa's financial services. In 2016, SARB blocked a small acquisition to create a new black-owned challenger bank. Percentage of black shareholders in APSA, Standard Bank and FNB are 6%, 5% and 3% respectively. PIC manages 1,857 trillion rand, but very little invested to support ordinary and small South African entrepreneurs. FSB invests 90% of its funds in a select few companies, majority controlled by interconnected elite. Uh, we've come to make a request to the public protector to broaden the scope of, um, of, of state capture, to include things like the National Treasury, South African Reserve Bank, Financial Intelligence Center, Public Investments, Financial Services Board, as well as the banks. We are a little bit worried that um, there are many areas where we are not happy, and uh, including, I mean, uh, the way Treasury is dealing with matters that relates to the economic growth and also, of course, is the South African Reserve Bank, its failure to really get the inflation rate under control. We should applaud the 90 that have now come forth. Uh, most certainly, I think that just as demonstrates the level of seriousness that we now need to start approaching these issues that really, I would say that this is a three-headed monster uh, for our country that really has to be tackled. If you look at what these MPs are asking that be investigated, I most wholeheartedly agree with them. Interestingly, Black First, Land First had lodged a similar appeal with the Public Protector's Office in Tulima Donzela's tenure, but to no avail. We lodged a similar complaint, but we said, implicate, investigate white settler monopoly capital on how they use their ownership of South African economy to directly interfere with the affairs of the state. We were quite clear to say investigate people like Johan Rupert, investigate people like the current CEO of APSA, which is Maria Ramos, investigate 
all the capitalist leaders in this country who continue to buy politicians and not only politicians and opposition parties, civil society organizations to speak on corruption, but corruption that does not implicate white settler monopoly capital. I would be very excited if the parliament would have approached the public project and parliament I'm talking about, the public parliament of the Republic of South Africa, not individual political parties. They would approach that office and say, there is an incomplete report. We should not shy from saying the report of the previous public project, it was incomplete. Therefore, we would like you to complete this report and each and every political party gives an input. Here's what the members of parliament want included in the wider capture probes ambit investigate the conduct, collusion and corruption of the financial services sector. Probe how Treasury, SARB, FIC, PIC work against the elected government. Probe how the National Treasury protects its friends in the business elite. Why is the Treasury, SARB, selective about granting new banking licenses? Why are there no prosecutions in the rand fixing scandal implicating big banks? Investigation into PIC's investment mandate that primarily benefits only the elite. Why no update on apartheid-era looting and the illegal bailout of Bancorp by SARB? Why no probe into big four banks shutting the bank accounts of a big South African employer? Why does FIC target one company without proof when it receives an average of 200,000 suspect transactions per annum? We don't have a black bank in South Africa. We do not have a state bank in South Africa. We have no control on the growth of our economy. Every time our key leaders, such as the sitting president now, calls, for example, for the radical transformation of the economy in this country, we are terrorized by white rating agencies who put our country into junk status and important institutions such as the Treasury and the South African Reserve Bank quickly succumb into that. Because as a people, we are unable to defend our own sovereignty. Look, for as long as we as South Africans do not control the Reserve Bank, we do not control fiscal policy of our country. And by not controlling fiscal policy of our country, our sovereignty, our very sovereignty, is, is aloof, it's, 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 it's not tangible because we are controlled by private entities that own our reserve bank. The white, monoco mo white monopoly capital will tell you that it is not important who owns the bank. It's very important because now we have people who are living overseas who control our reserve bank, who, who control our fiscal policy. So yes, they are. The white monopoly capital is running our country, is running all the different elements of our country. You talk about state capture, you talk about judiciary, you talk about um, executive, you talk about uh, parliament. After the request of the 90 plus MPs who approached the new public protector for a probe, some analysts believe that a separate and much wider capture probe is the need of the hour. We need to go beyond 1994. If anything, we need to go back to 1948. 1948 for very specific reasons. That's when we saw the, an acceleration of institutionalized dispossession of the African majority in all aspects. We saw an accelerated um, I can say, institutionalization of corruption, be it through what the Bruder Bond did, through the Nationalist Party government. We saw there that there were institutionalized companies that were externalized, uh, South African minerals that were stolen, particularly with gold. 3,000 tons of gold are alleged to have been stolen out of the South African Reserve Bank up to that period. So if you look at 1994, you will miss out on the 3,000 tons of gold that was stolen, which must be recovered and returned to South Africa to address our very uh, dire economic challenges. The most telling narrative of real capture of South African economy and the nation's resources perhaps comes from Public Enterprises Minister Lynn Brown, 
The minister told the parliament committee earlier this month that 90% of the supplies to key state-owned companies come from white-owned big businesses. resources in this country is given to us by white companies, not black companies. You know, the issue is that the majority of people in this country are black, that the economy is in the hands of a small group of people, and this is what they are, are scared of, that we might today, we might today radically transform this economy. Brown was answering MPs on allegations about power utility ESCOM's coal deal with Tegeta, and she announced that the department would be launching its own inquiry via the special investigative unit and presided over by retired judge into all coal contracts into ESCOM, including the 40-year evergreen contracts with coal monopolies. I and TOGETA will be part of that process. It's an imminent um, um, investigation. It will be completely independent um, in that it's within the SIU and it will be overseen in terms of what the recommendations are that come out of that um, um, by, I hope, a retired judge. Those coal plus mines are paid for by ESCOM. The land is bought by ESCOM, the machinery is paid for by ESCOM, mm -hmm. staff is paid for by ESCOM. Do we continue with those? It is increasingly tough to ignore the real estate capture that has been going on unnoticed and unchallenged for decades. The Bancorp bailout is just the tip of the iceberg. Allegations of selling out to white capitalists have even been leveled at late President Nelson Mandela. Accusers say Mandela submitted ANC economic policies after 1994 to the likes of Oppenheimer's Rothschilds and Rupert's for approval and made key revisions to protect the interests of white-held capital. The white is totally in control and has been totally in control and they got the license to continue to perpetuate this through the CODESA that now we're having a constitution that favors them as, as the oppressors of the time now claiming to be, to, be, to be democratic and then uh, be part of liberation. White monopoly capital is a monopolized system that keeps our people down in poverty, okay? And that system is not even perpetuated only by the whites that are here. It is actually run from elsewhere because what we have as Africans, what we don't realize is that we own the substance of what makes the economies we are the substance of what makes the economies. The dollar depends on us. If Africa was to say today, as Africa, we close our borders, we're not sending a single grain of anything out, New York Stock Exchange will collapse tomorrow. Not only does white monopoly capital have a stranglehold on the economy, it even allegedly uses this position to the detriment of the public through collusive practices and price fixing. Guilty verdicts in a string of cases like those of the banks, bread producers and construction companies bear testimony to this. In excess of 500 billion rand was lost, and that is not an accounting entry. That is not some fiction. Mm. It's real money that you and I, the ordinary people, Lose. felt it mm. in our pockets. It's money that came out of our pockets in increased prices, therefore ensuring that this country will perpetually be in a state of uh, poverty, inequality, and all the things that we so much desperately need to get out mm. of. So the media has failed us. We must accept mm. that. We need, as business, as government, and as the Chapter 9 institutions, we need to take economic justice more seriously. 
We all too worried about social and economic uh, and political justice, but economic justice speaks to everything that is wrong in our country. And if we don't introduce an element of fairness in the markets and proper oversight and transparency, we're going to have this phenomenon time and again, and eventually the kitty will be empty, the country will be in trouble. So we need to take this very, very seriously. The slowly growing noise about white monopoly capital in South Africa's political and economic fabric shaking up vested interests. Largely white-owned mainstream media, opposition and the so-called civil society taking up cudgels yet again, calling the term white monopoly capital a campaign to divert attention. But some experts questioning who is really trying to divert their attention here. To continue to deny that white monopoly capital, and that does not necessarily mean that white people in majority. We do have white people who, of course, they themselves are the victims, but the face of this uh, concentration of monopolies and oligopolies is whites and white imperialists. Despite the divisions in its ranks ahead of the December elective conference, and despite the fact that many in the ANC itself arguably want to see Zuma's back, even the ruling party has not been able to keep itself away from growing calls for a wider probe into state capture, one that goes beyond selectively targeting the Gupta family. And these challenges, comrades, that eat us, are issues of patronage, the issues of corruption, the issue of the capture of the state by outside interests. And unless we address these issues, we will struggle. I'm telling you the honest fact. We will struggle to build a strong and a coherent alliance that is supposed to execute the NDR. But almost everyone jumping the gun pending the judicial inquiry as recommended by Madonzela in her own report. We discuss the issue of a judicial commission of inquiry into state capture. And the NEC agrees, please, President, establish that judicial commission of inquiry because we need to understand that there was even a debate of whether it was started in 1994 or 1948 or what year and so forth. But what we are interested in is not only to justify the findings of the State of Capture report as reported by the Public Protector, is to understand the depth of the involvement of business in, in influencing government. The President himself, not opposed to the inquiry, only the manner in which Madonzelas recommended that the inquiry be instituted. The state capture is a big thing. It's not a small thing. It's a big thing. We now, I think, we now all agree we need to do it. And we can't pick and choose. We must do it generally. <clears throat> And that is going to help us because we are going to stop <clears throat> depending on rumors and allegations, but we will depend on the facts. Other parties even use <clears throat> the newspaper articles to go to court <laughs> and, then, and say you need to have a case on hearsay. But with nearly 90 members of parliament approaching the public protector's office to probe the real capture, question is, will Busisi Wemkwebani oblige? With a multitude of facts and evidence about the real capture of the South African economy and resources already in public domain, will the flawed narrative of Gupta capture be given a respite? 
um, the Guptas, for example, they have a company called Oak Bay. Only 6% of the proceedings that go to this company are linked to government contracts. So what does this really mean? Why did she not then expand her terms of reference? The state capture issue is meant to, dis to distract from unemployment and poverty the real issues that are facing our people. Because these issues, they stem from being landless in your own country. We don't have the land. And while we're fighting for land, we must be distracted by people who suffer from my money syndrome, like this compromise to Lima Donzella, you know, who, who, who somehow worship some white fury. We're Africans. I'm not a visitor in Africa. Multiple probes and a big drain on resources. Whenever the truth lies, who wins in the end? Because beneath it all languishes an economy that's bleeding investors after being labeled as junk. More than that, millions of citizens with much to contribute are left in limbo as a power struggle diverts attention from the real issues plaguing the country. The triple challenge of unemployment, poverty and inequality.